You've been using Warp Stabilizer wrong this whole time. Or at least partially. Here are two clips shot handheld, one without Warp Stabilizer and one with Warp Stabilizer using specific parameters. See the difference? In today's video, we're going to be talking about Warp Stabilizer and how you can use it to properly stabilize your videos in Premiere Pro. Now, I'm going to show you a couple tips and a couple tricks that you can use in Warp Stabilizer to make your footage look a little bit more smooth and not as finicky that oftentimes when you see footage that has Warp Stabilizer applied to it, it was applied to the footage, but not well, and it doesn't look very clean. Prior to you actually importing your footage and applying Warp Stabilizer, there are a couple key tips that I want to share when shooting handheld or even with gimbals. So the first is that when you use a wider lens, oftentimes it's a lot easier to use warp stabilizer than when you're using perhaps a 70 or 300 punched in zoom lens to shoot your footage. Typically zoom lenses are a little bit more difficult to hold handheld especially, and you can see the micro jitters appear in your footage a lot easier than perhaps a super wide lens like a 10 to 18 that I'm using right now. The other quick tip that I'd really like to touch on is that a lot of people when they're talking about handheld movement, they talk about perhaps setting up a handlebar on your actual camera and also putting a lot of weight on your camera. I don't like doing that because I do a lot of social content that's shot vertically, and so a handlebar doesn't really make sense. And also I don't want my camera to be too heavy because it's really hard to maneuver. So a quick tip is what I like to do is when I move my camera, I don't move with my arms. I like to lock my shoulders and move with sort of like my core body. Instead of trying to move it with my arms, I'll lock my shoulders and move my entire body with the camera. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you minimize the number of joints that are moving in conjunction with the camera, it helps become more fluid with your movement. So the more fluid that your actual handheld footage is, the easier it is to warp stabilize and make it look super smooth. So it's always helpful to make sure that the footage that you get out of your camera straight out is as smooth as possible, and we'll take care of the rest in Premiere Pro. All right, so in our timeline, I have three examples of the footage that we're gonna be using today. Let's go ahead and watch this first clip here. And this is all handheld. You can tell, obviously, there's a lot of micro jitters in this clip. And as I'm circling around towards our model SATA here today, it's kind of smooth, but it's not super smooth. And this is where Warp Stabilizer comes in really handy. So this first clip I have, I've actually applied Warp Stabilizer. Let's go ahead and delete this. Let's just apply it. Let's apply Warp Stabilizer. And when you apply Warp Stabilizer, there's two things that automatically happen. Obviously, it automatically analyzes your footage and then it applies these settings to it and it's smooth motion smoothest 50 percent and subspace warp what a lot of people don't know is that you can actually adjust the stabilization parameters to your liking in warp stabilizer so one thing you always want to keep is you always want to keep stabilized crop and auto scale on when you're stabilizing your footage and let's just watch this really quickly how it looks compared to the initial clip so let's play it back Okay, automatically you can tell that a lot of the micro jitters have been removed. However, when you play this back, if you can notice one thing, it's that there's a lot of warping on the edges throughout this clip. And it doesn't look very natural or human-like. It looks very automated. And this is just how Warp Stabilizer comes out straight out the gate. And one of the reasons why this happens is because you have subspace warp selected. So what subspace warp does is it warps the image to sort of select a center point or a point that's constant throughout the clip. And what it does is that it sort of tracks that central, for instance, in this clip, it's going to be state eye, it tracks it, but everything else in the surrounding areas or the edges sort of just warps to fill in the frame. And so it doesn't look super smooth and it doesn't look super natural. So this is where the parameter changes come in that are very handy. So this clip again, what I've already done is I've gone in and let me just do this for you real quickly. Let's delete it, select Warp Stabilizer. And what the first thing I like to do is I always like to change the smoothness down. So my kind of sweet spot I found is 10%. And the other method that I like to change is from subspace warp to actually position, scale, and rotation. So there are actually four different selections here. I like to choose position, scale, rotation. What this does is that it keeps the image always not warped if that makes sense it just sort of scales or rotates or fixes the image so that the center image is tracked and so it keeps it still 
not as mechanical, if that makes sense. So let's play this back. There's one point in this clip where it's kind of mechanical and that's this zoom. And that's because I zoomed in really quickly and wasn't super stable with my handheld movement. But besides that, if you compare this clip to the initial clip, this clip looks like it was almost shot on a, on a gimbal. And this is all handheld movement. And this is done by preserving the smoothness to a lower level than 50%. Alternatively, if you were, for ex example, bump this up to 100%, what happens is that it'll crop in tighter to your image and you'll lose a little bit of resolution. That's because it's trying to stabilize more. And so it'll zoom in and latch on to a center image uh, a little bit stronger. So let's play this back. As you can tell, it's not necessarily even smoother by any means. It just kind of cropped in and, and tried to, to catch that, that center point more. Another key here is that I wouldn't apply Warp Stabilizer to an entire clip and then crop out what you need and nest it or sort of edit it afterwards. I would already crop the clip that you want, only those sections, and then apply Warp Stabilizer on top of it. So for instance, this clip, I don't really need this first part here. So I would crop this initially before I even applied Warp Stabilizer. And the second thing is like, at this very end part when I pan away, I would crop this as well or, or cut it and trim it before I apply Warp Stabilizer. And then I would apply it and change my parameters. Oftentimes if you're applying Warp Stabilizer to clips that have these sort of movements in them, this right here where it pans away, that'll affect the entire warp stabilization of the clip because it warp stabilizes the entire clip and sort of tracks it. So I would cut it right before this happens and then apply warp stabilizer. And that'll just ensure that your clips are, are pretty seamless throughout the whole, the whole shot. So yeah, those were a couple quick tips on how to maximize warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro. This is a way to maximize the stabilization, but remove the warping effect on the actual footage and makes it super clean. As always, really appreciate you guys staying to the very end. Please like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one.